Hello everyone. Today we are going to see about uh, some other topics in VRAP. As uh, you have already seen in the previous video about our introduction uh, in VRAP. Uh, if you haven't seen it yet, please go. It's linked in the description uh, in VRAP tutorial dot eh. And uh, what we see, what we are going to see today is on about IK that is inverse kinematics and dynamics we have already seen about some of the topics of joints shapes vision sensors four sensors graphs cameras lights paths and dummies we have also seen about how to use the icons in VREP of how to navigate in a camera how to use simulation and other modules we are going to specify other modules in other videos also but for today we are going to mostly concentrate on uh, ik that is inverse kinematics and forward kinematics and dynamics we have seen here this is the scene hierarchy here where we can see what all or uh, what all are present in our main scene here we can see in the scene that there is a uh, robot and there is a conveyor uh, and there is a table this modeling is done on IK module that is the inverse kinematic module and in this slide you, you, this is the configure how to configure the inverse kinematics module and after you assemble the robot and uh, defining the scene hierarchy ik module can be defined based on your requirement and you have to follow 11 steps for defining the ik module first enable all the joints are in inverse kinematics mode and let us see how to do it how to do that so this is this is my robot and these are the revolute joints so and when i click the joints the respective joints are in the scene are being highlighted yes now let us start with the first joint revolute joint double click it and here mode here in the mode the mode i have selected is i inverse kinematics mode and you also have a different uh, modes here and um, this torque or force mode is uh, you can actually give actuation <coughs> so in the inverse kinematics if you are following inverse kinematics make sure that the joints you need to function are to be set to inverse kinematics mode similarly i have done i have selected uh, other joints also to the inverse kinematics mode revolute 2 is in, in ik mode 3 is also in ik mode 4 is in IK mode, 5 is also in IK mode, 6 is also in IK mode, perfect. And yeah, first make sure the joints are in IK mode and after that adding dummy, target dummy and tip dummy to the scene. And then next step is to position and orient the dummies. And fourth step is specifying a target to follow. So uh, here basically you have to uh, link the dum target dummy and tip dummy and fifth step is adding new ik group and ik element sixth step configuring the base of the inverse kinematic sorry kinematic chain seventh selecting the constraints like x y z alpha beta and gamma and eighth one is choosing the calculation method uh, if you want to use pseudo inverse you could use that and if you want to use dls method you could use that but in my case i have used a dls method pseudo inverse method wasn't working here in my case uh, uh, there's some problem with that i uh, maybe it's due to the uh, background calculations of the inverse uh, inverse jacobian there's there, there seems to be little complexity in that so pseudo inverse isn't working well with in my case so i have selected dls method and ninth one is defining a path for its travel 
10th one adding a script and 11th one it's over simulating the scene um, now let us do practically all these steps let's start so here is the scene hierarchy and uh, this is the base of the robot robot underscore base and this is my actual robot yeah this is my actual robot this is the conveyor table and this is just a stationary table and this blue colored line that you um, let me zoom it yeah this this line is the path which the robot follows now let me play the scene and uh, so that you will understand how to use i what is ik module and how to use it let me click the start simulation button right uh, as you can see here the cube is falling down and the conveyor moves the belt moves and the cube follows the belt and when the <coughs> um, cube comes over here the robot detects it and it starts to grasp the cube and after grasping it come returns to this point and from here it follows the path and then it's the same path here I have defined the path over here yes this is my path i have defined the control points for that and uh, after reaching after the robot reaches the last point the robot it drops the the manipulator drops the cube and the cube falls on the table and then the robot returns back while returning back it doesn't have any path here so uh, it, it will probably see for the shortest part available and it will come back <coughs> So uh, let us focus on the inverse kinematics module here. Um, so this f of x button you see here. This is the uh, this after clicking it, it opens a calculation module. In the calculation module, we have inverse kinematics module. So in order for the simulation to function, you have to define either inverse kinematics module or um, dynamics module. Uh, for in this particular part, I have uh, I am focusing on inverse kinematics module. Dynamics module will be thought will be thought after a few minutes. So I have defined a IK group inverse kinematic groups. It contains one IK element, and the calculation method that I have used here is DLS algorithm. So there are two different methods available. Uh, these 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 two are the in, uh, inverse kinematics methods. Pseudo inverse method is one method, and DLS damped least squares. This is one method. So you can um, define the damping constant over here. Mm. Yeah, and let us see what's there inside this IK group. Edit IK group. Uh, so there's a tip inside the IK elements IK elements there's a tip and the base of the tip is the robot and the target is defined as the target and the constraints I have taken all the constraint X Y Z alpha beta gamma and the relative coordinate frame is select is as same as base uh, now let's go a little bit deeper into how to define the um, IK module. So what I did was I added a dummy, add dummy. Yeah, here it is. Add dummy. So after you added, add a dummy. So here is my dummy. After you add it, just rename it to something like tip or target. Tip basically in the inverse kinematics module, we need two dummies. One is tip and the other is the target. And as you can see here, the tip is right here and the target is also on the same location. So both has to be present in the uh, same position. And orientation may or may not be same it depends on the application and after you add the tip just rename it 
and then position it accordingly where you want so i have positioned it on the uh, manipulator you know the grasping point so after you rename it what you have to do is double click this particular icon and then link it uh, this is called a linking dummy dummy linking so this is a dummy and this is a, another dummy so i am basically linking i am basically linking target with that of it tip so and you see after you link it you will see this red colored um, arrow marks red colored line you know something like this it represents that these two dummies have been linked and the link type uh, you, you have to select it as ik tip target linking and after you are done with linking you have to add the inverse kinematics group so add new group and let me delete the old group yes this is the new group that i have added and i could rename it to a uh, new underscore group in, in any name you like and it ha it ha it doesn't contain any elements here zero ik elements uh, in order to add ik elements what you have to do is select this and press this button edit ik elements and this particular dialog box will open now select add new tip uh, sorry add new ik element with tip let me undo it uh, add new ik element with tip and here you have to select tip tip and press this button then tip will be added here and the base should be robot yeah and the target should is target it's 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 automatic it's uh, showing automatically target because we have linked the uh, two dummies over here and in the constraints dialog you can tick x y z alpha beta and gamma if you if you are uh, if you do not want any orientation then you can untick it and if you you have if you want the robot to follow the orientation then you have to tick these uh, two things click close then now close uh, now let us play this start the simulation and see what happens yes it's perfect it's working uh, and one more thing is how it works now now that you have learned uh, inverse kinematics module uh, you have defined that the um, what do you say uh, the tip should target should follow the path but as you can see in the simulation all the joints have been actuated you see the joints are revolving how 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 is it happening uh, basically i have uh, written a script for the joints to follow the target so yes now i have uh, removed the script now let us see what happens you see nothing happens uh, so what i am trying to say is uh, script is important for the robot to follow the inverse kinematics module let me uh, yeah undo i have undo i have uh, clicked control z and the script has returned back and this is the script and here in this script i have defined the path in uh, take this initialization section i have defined the path in the script and i have also defined the target and i have defined the prismatic joint and i have given the velocity and gripper open position close position the time in for which it has to operate and the position orientation default positions and orientation you see this target yeah um this target is the target dummy here it is target 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 dummy and this is the actual script uh, actual logic behind the um, actual uh, simulation so if you can understand this logic if the robot understands this logic and there are no errors then the robot will follow based on the program written here the robot is functioning and i'll explain you the script in in a few minutes and uh, 
so we are done with the inverse kinematics module now let us do dynamics module 